All right. Well, you guys want to start with storks. I'm let's down. Do it. All right. Um, let's start with you, Ozzy. What did you think of storks? Um, I think kids will generally love this movie. I'm going to get to my general audience further down, but I think kids will generally really like this movie. Agreed. Um, the movie had a lot of heart in it towards the when we were getting towards the towards the second act. And I think that was I think that's uh, where the movie sort of got interest, like where I got interested in the movie. So I thought it had a lot of heart. And I think kids will generally like this movie. So it's it's all right. It's not too bad. All right. Miles, what were your thoughts? Yeah, and I think I'm basically for once on the same page with <laughs> Ozzy here. Where if I were to like describe it in one word, it's Storks is fun because I can't give it. I can't say that it's fully good, mm-hmm. but I will say that it'll work for kids and it'll be bearable enough for adults mm-hmm. that it has intentions and it has jokes that do land, even though there's a lot that doesn't necessarily appease to adults very well. Yeah, that was my thing with this movie. Like, I overall, I think if I take a step back and go, did I have fun with this movie? The answer would be yes. It, it was fun. It was a fun time. Were there parts of it that I absolutely loathed and would cut out? Yes. <laughs> That's just a fact, and we'll get to those more specifically um, in a little bit. But let's start with our positives. Miles, what were some of your positives for this movie? I think some of the biggest positives would be out of the main cast, Because generally, for me at least, animation has this trend of casting these really big-name actors, but they're super interchangeable for the Mm -hmm. most part. But in this movie, I legitimately thought Andy Samberg, who starred as the main bird, was really well casted as his part. Kelsey Grammer as well was really fun to hear. And a newcomer-ish, Katie Crown, Mm -hmm. I think that's her name, she voiced the main chick in the movie. Oh, she was great. They were all, like, really good. Better than most movies, which is probably the biggest positive I could give it. Yeah, voice acting, definitely. I'm on the same page with you there. Ozzy, what did you think? Yeah, I thought the the voice acting in this movie was actually pretty good, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is... Um, you know, a lot of a lot of animation casts, like a lot of animation movies, tend to have great voices, and I think this is this is a great example of a great cast and and, and a good movie. So, um, I think the voice acting was actually was actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, the movie had 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 some parts had some parts where I had heart, and I appreciated that. Agreed. And, um, Especially towards the end. Like, for me, that's when it was kind of like, all right, this movie's fine. This, this is getting to me. And to me, it kind of justified some of the bad parts, I guess you would say, of the movie. Because I was just like, all right. Because I still ultimately care enough about these characters that I'm feeling this emotion that I'm supposed to be feeling. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and to, um, to me, that that's, um, if you don't mind, to, to me, one of the strongest points of this movie is... Some of the characters in this movie, especially your two leads, um, Andy Samberg's character and um, who, what was his name, Junior, and then Tulip, who is the girl. Mm -hmm. Um, She, she specifically, she had a great character, and I, from, basically from our first scene, I was like, I really like her character. She was really, like, easy to um, relate to, and um, I got attached to her really quick as a character. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, she was, she was pretty funny, um... She was definitely relatable to to a lot of people. So, have to agree. She was. She had a lot of the her her and Junior had had great dialogue together. I would agree. Say. Um, it carried it. It carried the movie eh? from from what it from what I would have rated it to them lifting from their performance, basically lifting it up. It, I think yeah. it, I think it says a lot. And their characters had a good arc too. Like mm-hmm. over the movie, you kind of see it. And yes, is a little like step by step like really easy to see yes but i think it worked for this movie agreed yeah and i i think some of the comedy hit it hit it hit for me at least yeah like in some scenes i'm just like this is actually pretty funny i can i can go with this i do want um, to add to that two people that we haven't mentioned that were really fun to listen to in it are key and peel themselves keegan michael key and jordan peel they were fun, but I do want to say there is a part at near the end I won't spoil. I don't know if you guys are moved by the same exact. It was a little like couple second long beat. Mm-hmm. It was between the main character and the baby. Yeah, and it really hit me hard. Like mm-hmm. that moment felt 
I would say Pixar. It yeah. was just a moment, but it was really moving. Agreed. Uh, I <laughs> there are definitely some moments like where because they they use the comedy in the movie really well to kind of build the characters. So, like I said, you do end up caring about these characters, mm-hmm. and that's why I really liked. And I would say also the overall concept and the story of this movie it went in a completely first of all a completely different direction than what i was expecting going in and secondly i just thought it was a really cool idea and i thought the story was pretty well developed I, you might disagree but for me i thought it really worked i thought the kind of mythology i guess that they set up was pretty cool um so i was interested in it from interested in it from the get-go um is there any other positives that we want to bring up before we get into our negatives, which I think Miles is, like, holding back a little bit right now? <laughs> That's it for me, man. All right. Um, Miles, you want, why don't you start us off with your negatives here? Well, I do want to preface or preface or whatever you want to say. I want to start it with this. That saying, it's really hard for me to deconstruct a movie like this knowing what it's meant for. Mm-hmm. And it's a product made to please kids. Yes. And to give parents a break. And this movie will do that very well. But I will say, with the concept in hand, I do think there is so much more that they could have done with this. Because imagine, imagine if a Pixar directed a movie called Storks. Mm -hmm. All the different ideas that would be going through your head. What you could expect from a trailer. What you could expect from the movie. I just thought they could have played around with some more adult and child humor. A lot more in this movie. And not only that, I felt like there were scenes where they were trying to build suspense or build an arc. But they would all of a sudden just completely cheat that Mm -hmm. for the sake of moving the plot forward easily. But those were the two things that really stuck out to me, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, To me, I I get what you're saying because is it clever like a Pixar movie, like an Inside Out, where they take these concepts and they're like, all right, what's a really cool way we can explain something like this? No, it's not at all. Like, they do some really, like, okay, we're just having fun and this is just a stupid, like, this is how we're going to do this. That's fine. Um, I do, like, obviously, that'll come into play with our rating, but like you said, you kind of have to put yourself into the mind of a kid with your enjoyment of this. So, that's that's why it's not too big of a negative that I necessarily want to talk about, um, for myself at least. To um, me, <laughs> yeah, okay, you go, Ozzy. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, to me, I mean, I kind of agree with Miles in a sense. It's just, unlike, unlike some of the other animations that we've seen this year, mm-hmm. with Kubo, Zootopia, mm-hmm. um, and another, and other films like that, it's just, it has those, like, like Finding Dory also, it, those tend to have more heart and more humor towards also adults. Mm-hmm. And, um, I end up like with all those movies. I'm just like, ow! Like this actually hits me. This one didn't really hit me like that, which is why I kind of put this as like a negative in a sense. Yeah. Just because all these other animations from different companies have really, you know, like kind of hit. It's kind of just like brought it kind of like as a family movie. Mm-hmm. And I think that's sort of like a goal if we're going to kind of like do this kind of movie because you want you also want to kind of please the parents as well. But yeah. this had so much childish moments in the movie. Like, I was, for, like, the first, like, 20 minutes of this movie, I really wasn't engaged. Really? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, yeah, because it felt really childish, in, like, in the beginning. I mean, sure, like, the first, you could talk about the intro, but then once I really got into Junior's character and what he was doing and stuff like that, I was like, this feels really childish. Uh, um, see, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but, I, again, I, this is not something I really want to dwell on. <laughs> but my last... <laughs> My last thought on this issue is that it didn't cross my line that I've set a hard line in this podcast before about what bothers me when it comes to these movies and what doesn't. And it didn't cross the line. There were no animals driving a car. That's all I ask. As long as you don't have an animal driving a car, I'm good. And it didn't. So I'm going to discuss one line. that point. <laughs> That's Even the line. Like the Incredibles. We're going to discuss. We're going to discuss this as soon as we end this podcast. It's kind of hypocritical if you say that, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um, it didn't cross the line. Um, Stop all right. Crappy, not Dory. <laughs> Shut up. Um, okay, my biggest issue with this movie, and this is something that. This is what I was talking about when I said there were entire bits and segments of this movie that I could just cut out and that I absolutely hated myself for having no sit-through. 
Um, the character of Pigeon Toady. Amen. Oh my gosh. I wanted... Yes. At first I was like, okay, this is just a really stupid character that is not working at all. But then they keep coming back to it. Oh my gosh, they keep coming back to it. And I was... I literally, I was like, I'm going to kill myself. This is so stupid. Uh, I, I don't know if you had as strong feelings, but I know Miles did as well because we talked about it after the movie. Yes. Um, but, Ozzy, what did you think of the character who talked like, I don't know what he was going for, but it was horrible. It was so annoying. <laughs> like, I just don't understand. Like, it felt like a different part of a movie. And I'm just like... It was just, I was so annoyed with his character and the fact that he ended up playing a big part and it surprised me and it caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was like a messed up twist for me because I'm just like, really? Him? Yeah. (laughs) This guy? It was just so out of place. Yeah, I thought he would only be like a cameo, but he ended up having a bigger part in this movie and um, it was annoying for me to see. Every time he spoke, I was annoyed. It, and that's a fun. I think it really kind of would have worked if he was just like one of those characters that had like one line and mm-hmm. went out. Yeah. But I was just as shocked as you guys. That, and he was just a freaking stereotype. Yes. Like it's an animation. We got to hold it to a certain standard, but we still got to have some level yes, exactly. of not making our kids mentally challenged <laughs> for when they get older. But that's just my two cents. Um, jeez. Yeah, but I, I agree with you there. Uh, my last negative, I don't know if you guys have any major, other major things you want to talk about, but my last negative, which is something that we actually haven't even mentioned in, about, in this review yet, which I think is very telling. There's a third main character in this movie, the kid, and his storyline just felt, first of all, it felt so forced. It just was like, it was pointless. It's forgettable. Yes, very forgettable. And secondly, I don't know if this bothered you, but he his lines were not written like a kid at all. He talked like a freaking adult. And yeah. I was like, You're, this is like a four-year-old kid, we're led to believe, or something like that, really young. And he's talking like an adult. Like, at one point, he was talking about, like ethnic divides in Europe, and I'm like, th- okay, I get this was supposed to be like a b- <laughs> joke, but it did not work, and it no just... No one laughed. No, it was, it was it's so stupid. Yeah, like, yeah I, I, yeah, like, I felt, like, there's this scene where I felt that the kid was taking control of the dad. I'm just like, how are you doing this? Yeah. Because like, you're right, it felt like an adult talking talking to another adult here, it was complete. It was forgettable. Maybe they're um, trying to go for that, though. Maybe, but it didn't, I work. Appreciate, it didn't work. I do appreciate the the heart that they have in in those scenes, though. Yeah. I do think that it worked out in the end. Uh, but I would say, yeah, I would I guess. say, I'd say, sort of the beginning. You know, mm-hmm. the beginning, kind of him talking to his parents in the beginning. I'm just like, I don't care. Yeah, I agree. And it just, it felt it felt like he was taking control of the situation. Uh huh. All right, well, unless you guys have any more negatives you want to get to, do you want to just rate this movie and move on? Let's rate this. All right. Um, Ozzy, let's start with you. What is your rating for Storks? A 6.1. Wow. All right. Uh, fair enough. Miles, how about you? You are so generous. I give it a 5.9997 out of 10. <laughs> okay. I can't quite get it to 6. I can't quite get it to 6. Oh my gosh. But I don't want to feel like a jerk by just giving it a 5.9. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's like the first multiple level of decimal. I don't know. That, that was don't strange. tell me how to live my life. <laughs> um... You guys actually disliked this movie more than I did. I think I like this movie. Um, I, I like this movie fine enough. I think it's on the same level as I don't. I didn't have as high expectations for this movie as I did for um, a movie that we talked about on our biggest disappointments of the summer, Secret Life of Pets. I had bi- I had mm. decent sized expectations for that movie, and it I, let me I down. Thought, I thought that, that movie was. Better than this movie. It didn't betray no. its own no. screenplay like this movie. Yes. Movie. Well, I don't know. Uh, see, for me, I think these movies, Secret Life of Pets, and this are kind of on the same level. But I kind of liked this one. End up liking this one more because I didn't have as high expectations. I guess. Yeah, I could see that. So, same, being that it's on the same level, I'm going to put it in the same range. So I'm a, at about a six point seven. So, it's. Okay, We're I have think. We'll debate about Life of Pets, Carlos, one of these days. <laughs> we will. Um, I think they're. It's okay. It's just. I'm not going to, like, recommend anybody go see it with their kids. I think there's better animated movies. Just stay home and watch Zootopia for crying out loud. 
Um, yeah, it's, on, it's, it's on Netflix now, so <laughs> whatever.